Hello everyone. Have you ever wondered why there's so many content about Flutter development and so little content about actual Flutter testing? This video will be addressing uh, Flutter testing, so Flutter unit testing, widget testing, and integration testing. Uh, and we're going to be testing two applications. So the screenshots you see here are part of a calorie tracker application and the screenshots that follow are part of a form uh, app. So basically this is an example app created by uh, the Flutter development team and we're going to be testing, so running some uh, tests on these two applications uh, in order to give you a better idea of how to develop unit tests, integration tests, and widget tests. This video is uh, accompanied by a blog post which I'll link to in the description and the two application uh, GitHub source code is also uh, included in the video description. So if you want to clone it and uh, follow along, feel free to do so. First, we'll be covering unit testing. So unit testing is by far the most important part of uh, testing. And it should comprise most of the tests that you write. Um, this is because they're easy to run, they isolate uh, functionalities and they are less flaky and they give you a better indication of whether specific parts of your application are functioning as they should. Uh, so first let's uh, look at some unit tests. So in the calorie tracker application, uh, just import it, go to the test unit test models and then favorite food test folder or file and open up the file. So over here we can see we're instantiating uh, favorite foods class. This model class will be subject to testing uh, in this uh, unit test file. And in this test function, what we're doing is we're creating a food and then we're adding it to favorite foods. So favorite food is a class uh, that extends change notifier and has an array of food items. It also has two methods, so add and remove items, food items. And what we're testing in this test case is whether or not a food item that is added is actually contained in the food items array. So it is pretty straightforward. And in the second test, what we're testing is we're creating a new food item adding it and then checking if it's contained, so similar to this uh, previous test, but then we're removing it and then we're expecting to not find it, uh, and w which is why we have false as a value here. Uh, so basically we're adding and checking and then we're adding, checking, deleting, and then checking for non-existence in this, case, uh, this test case. Um, also notice that the convention I'm following for uh, labeling these tests is the given when then format. Uh, this is just a good uh, standardized way to name your tests so that other developers have a better idea of what your tests are actually testing for. So now without further ado, let's run these tests. So the result will be shown in uh, the debug console and it usually takes a while to run. So we'll try to speed things up. Okay, so now our tests have uh, shown their test results and saying all tests have passed. And uh, so our unit tests for this um, favorite foods class are successful. Now we can move on to uh, another functionality. So. Uh, next, we'll be writing some unit tests involved in the testing of the database service class. And uh, to do this, we've created a database the Dart file. And over here, um, we're testing uh, some database uh, service functionality. So database service is basically the service class that interacts with the Firestore database um, that is used for this application. So basically, um, as shown in these screenshots, it has records of food track instances. And these instances are stored in a Firestore database and they are fetched um, 
based on the database service classes uh, link to Firestore database. So what we're going to do is we're going to test this database service class and uh, the way we're going to test uh, this class uh, well before we do that let's go over quickly what the database service class actually is. So a database service uh, it has a Firestore collection of food tracks and food tracks is the name of our collection and uh, it has a number of methods like add food track, delete food track, get all food tracks, um, and yeah, and load a food track entry into the database. So it's basically handling CRUD operations uh, concerning the food tracks collection uh, in Firestore. And here we're instantiating it, we're passing in a UID, so the database UID of Fire. Um, or um, calorie tracker, which is seen here. Uh, then we are passing in a current date, date time now. This is less important, but uh, database service get all food track data is basically giving a list of uh, food track instances that can be saved to a list of type dynamic. And then basically, what we're doing in this first test is we're checking that the length is non-zero, so greater than zero. Um, and this is done to ensure that we are getting some um, food track instances from this um, return result. Uh, also, we have a group function right here. And this group function is encased, uh, encapsulating these two tests. Uh, so if you want to think of traditional testing terms, this should be considered a test suite and these are the uh, test cases contained in it and um, moving on to the second test we have basically the same thing as uh, the previous one except that now we're fetching the first uh, food track element using the uh, index uh, zero assigning it to a dynamic type and then we're creating a food track task using the data we get from that first uh, element. So a food track task is basically a class that is exactly modeled after our food track uh, records in the database and it has a lot of the same uh, fields so food named calories, carbs, fats, proteins, uh, meal time and a lot of that. Um, and then we take that data and then we, uh, we use that to fill in the fields here uh, the created on field is quite special because it needs a date time uh, value whereas the food track uh, instance in the database uses a timestamp so we use to date to convert a timestamp to a date time once we have this uh, instance this food track task instance uh, instantiated we check its fields and make sure they're not empty. So this is then to make sure that what we get from the database, the first element we get from the database, uh, actually contains the data. So for the string types, uh, we're using is empty false to basically make sure that this is not empty. And for the number types, we're using is NAA uh, or uh, is not a number and um, this is done to ensure that uh, the value contained in these number fields are actual numbers. So they could be zero, um, but they have to be a number. That's a requirement, and that's what we're doing with these expect calls. Um, and then we have created on, so this is a bit more tricky where we have the created on uh, date, and the created on date is always gonna be in the past compared to the present date because it's not possible to create a uh, create on date that is in the future. So what we're doing is we're checking that the created date, if the created on date is after date time, uh, this test should fail. But instead it uh, should pass because the created on uh, date time should always be in the past instead of uh, the future. Grams is the same thing, so it's a uh, number type. Next, let's run our tests. Again, this will take a while. Um, I'll try to speed things up. 
Okay, so now the tests have run, and we can see uh, because we've included some print statements here, we're seeing the output of those um, instances that we get back from the database. Um, but overall, our tests have passed, and uh, basically these two tests will test the database service functionality. Um, so this will conclude the unit testing section. Uh, there's a lot more we can add, but for the sake of brevity, let's end it here. Uh, but yeah, so this ends the data, uh, the unit testing section. I'll see you in the widget testing section, um, where we'll show how to test widgets.